just saying, yeah, we can do anything you want, and they're really easy to work with. So sorry about that uh, unprofessional <laughs> interjection into the conversation. Well, it was it was valuable, so don't don't feel bad about it yeah. at all. <laughs> um, Better late than never. <laughs> so Sean. What do you think? Like, what do you think was the inspiring moment when you decided, let's make an event? Like, what what kind of brought it to life? Uh, I think, like over the years, I've heard from many different groups throughout the county. Like, we should have a convention. We should have a gaming convention, an anime convention, a music festival. So, so you live in Bremerton? Yeah. Oh, I used to. You used but to live I in moved to Seattle recently. Recently, yes. But after you started playing the event. Yes. Got it. Okay. But uh, so a bunch of people saying we should have a convention. And then one day Blake just messaged me on Skype saying, hey, I'm thinking of doing a convention. Like <laughs> yeah. just saying, let's do a convention. I'm like, can I help? Um, I think it's really important that, you know, a lot of people don't believe that they're in a like the position of privilege to go out and say, oh, I'm going to put myself at the forefront of the community and like decide this. Well, that's kind of like the wrong perspective on it to take because, in my opinion, if you want to contribute somehow, if you like see a gaping hole where there wasn't something and something should be, like a convention for Bremerton, like, why not? Exactly. I mean, no, it's not going to happen. I mean, it's yeah, obviously, yeah. if somebody else was going to do it, they would have did it already, so might as well make it happen. Exactly. Um, so I'm sure like that's what was going through you and Blake's head when you kind of got the event organized. Um, so... I, you know, what's boggling to me is that you guys got it funded because funding is huge for rents like this. You need to rent out the venue. You got to rent like tons of equipment. You got to pay for all sorts of stuff and transportation and logistics. It's, it's a mess that ends up being a huge bill at the end. So how did you guys get about getting the money to put it on? Kickstarter. Kickstarter. To put it, to put it simply. <laughs> Yay, Kickstarter. Man. Okay. When we first, okay. Gamcon wasn't even like a we were gonna try and do this, mm -hmm. but we need funding. And me with my job, I just don't have the kind of paying job where I can just kind of put right. You can't just cash. put the whole bill. Yeah, and yeah. I don't have the like the business proposal acumen to get any sort of loan from anyone. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Kickstarter is truly the only way for me to do this. So I just kind of worked it out. And I kind of exploited the call to action being, you know, we got to bring something fun to Bremerton. This mm -hmm. doesn't have to be the next PAX. It never will. It never should. But it's something where locals can go to kind of express their, you know, their hobbies and their families right, right. and stuff like that. And, um, oh, the noise is gone. And so <laughs> what I did was I spent like almost an entire month creating branding. So I created mm -hmm. logo as a created so art. It's a I, very, very nice banner, if I say so myself. Oh, I, I really appreciate You know, it. as a graphic designer slash digital artist, good job. It's okay. very attractive. <laughs> that actually means a ton yeah. to me because I was just like, oh, really? This no, is an amateur hour. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I created media signage and everything. So like this, so this looks like this is something you can get behind. Mm -hmm. And then I just kind of researched how to do Kickstarters. So that was kind of its own little project in itself because, you know, 40% of Kickstarters fall through. And, like, you need to know that 50% of Kickstarters is something that are over 30 days. Those fall through as well. And mm -hmm. if you don't have a video, that falls through. And I didn't have a video. So I was like, you have to calculate all these risks against the benefits. And eventually, once we launched it, we... We didn't have a website going. All we had was our Facebook and our Twitter. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those Kickstarters where it's just like, uh, you know, if you're looking at it, like, say for a game, if you're looking at that Kickstarter, you're like, they don't have a full game yet. Like, what do I do? Do I, do I throw down for this? But enough people believed in what I put together and the Facebook was around enough and mm -hmm. my, my proposal and everything was around enough was conservative enough and not too ambitious where people are like, okay, yeah, this is something that can actually happen. Um, would you say that a large percentage of the event's success was in due to like, uh, like volunteer contributions where there's like, were there like people who were like, oh, hey, if there was a convention, I'd be there. I'd have a booth. I'd have a panel. I'd have a tournament. Like, were there people who approached you and said, I hear you might be running an event, and it's only going to be possible if, you know, you have some contributors and they were willing to volunteer their contributions? That was actually about half of our contributions. <laughs> okay. So we actually, uh, we filled out almost our entire convention hall 
just because of the people who signed up for their Kickstarter to get the booth rewards and the artist mm. alley rewards. Oh, so, so if you had if somebody like contributed a certain amount to the Kickstarter, they got a spot spot on the floor. Exactly. Oh, okay. Well, that's a cool that system. Was because you know, <laughs> as a Kickstarter, it's not a donation system. It mm. really is a. It nor is it like a business proposal system where you're kicking in. It's not an investment. It's a you pledge and you get this reward. Right. So they're not getting a cut of it. They're getting an opportunity. Yeah, they're getting exactly what they sign up. Mm. So you, if you if you pledge one hundred fifty dollars, you mm. get ten by ten foot booth. Oh, all right. And you can do a lot with 10 feet. Hard. I mean, yeah. So. And uh, if you get the, like, I believe it was the $250 tier, um, you get the 10x10 booth plus, like, all of the swag from, mm -hmm. like, the $100 reward. So it oh, kind of, cool. it was kind of a piling on of rewards at the top level. So because of that, like, once our Kickstarter was actually over, uh, we actually already had a convention. Mm -hmm kind of all set up i mean we had to get the logistics and everything going we had to get the contracts out but we had the the, the flour and the eggs of the dish that makes the convention so we have the full first floor completely filled out mm -hmm. and the next part of it was second floor with events and stuff but well, not it, on topic it definitely sounds like a really uh, great system that you guys put in place uh definitely I mean, solve the problem. You guys got money to, to uh, pay for the venue, um, but it does sound like you guys tackled a pretty ambitious project. I mean, you put on you put on a convention. You've got it's just so much happening. Um, and for somebody who's like just starting out with event organization, um, you know that might be like, you know, <laughs> mentally. Um, yeah, uh, this isn't. It's, this isn't your uh, 1990s. I'm just starting a right. convention in my high school ballroom thing this is a thing that kind of because we were using a kickstarter mm -hmm. you had the opportunity um, to make it so much bigger yeah and not only that because it was a succeeding kickstarter that made eleven thousand dollars there are standards that come with that like okay right. this better be a big kind of a big event yeah you guys uh you guys definitely have a lot of pressure riding on you but it sounds like you're really well prepared for it so i'm excited for the event overall yeah right now it's just gonna be kind of a the very moment we finished mm -hmm. our Kickstarter, it was like, okay, we have six months to kind of go, you know, all out now for every single day. So uh, this <laughs> lead up has been very stressful. So I imagine. But at, once this convention's over, the next one is going to be amazing. Yeah, I mean, you guys are going to have a great, is, great platform to work from. Um, yeah. So on the flip side of the coin, there are other events like uh, small events that are just as important to you know, local communities, um, like, now when I say small, I mean, like, extra small, like, even living room slash basement slash attic <laughs> events where you're like, hey, everybody in Everett who plays Dungeons & Dragons, let's have a Dungeons & Dragons event in my attic, and <laughs> let's stream it, let's say, on a webcam. Um, and I know, Shandor, you put on a, a lot of events like this, like, you get COD tournaments where players will just show up because... They're the collective represent representatives of like the Call of Duty environment for the Pacific Northwest. And it's not like a huge event, but you need events like this to stay open. I mean, they're part of the livelihood of your store, of uh, your business. And um, I know a little bit about how your funding works for that because I'm kind of invested in it myself. But if you can give me a quick recap on how hosting events helps you keep, keep yourself afloat in the environment or how money is budgeted from paying venue um, to like help keep the events going. I mean, can you give me a little insight on that? Um, if you mean just like how to keep GamCon itself going? Oh, oh, sorry, I was questioning Chandor. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. It's okay, it's okay. Well, I mean, for us, I mean, for, for us, I mean, events are kind of our livelihood. It's not really like our primary thing mm -hmm. that we do because we do so many other things here. I mean, and we have done large events like we did EOS at, at the uh, Hilton in downtown Seattle as mm -hmm. well. So for us, it's more, I mean, for me personally, it's more, I mean, I don't want to say it's a, it's not really about the money that I raise for the event. It It's really for me, it's about giving, giving the community a chance to showcase their skills um, at a local event to kind of get them ready for a large convention style of event, kind of like what's, what you're, what you're trying to run. 
Right. I mean, I think I think for me, it's kind of like, especially when we run a lot of like um, League of Legends, which is really popular for us. You know, I think, you know, when people see those guys that are going to those large events, like they hold a Staples or Staples Center or something like that, and they're thinking, man, it's like, how do I get to that point where I'm an elite player or or I'm ready for something like that? Then it's kind of like that's what I feel that my events help do. It gets them into a tournament environment. They get to know the players. They get to feel a little bit of pressure. They get to um, they get to really like focus on a lot of things like that that you wouldn't normally get by, you know, maybe going to like a land party in somebody's garage. Mm-hmm. I mean, but um, go ahead. Oh, so I mean, I as me personally, I was a little bit um, culture shocked when I jumped into like the gaming anime whole sub community because my first event like the literally the first time i left my house to go to like a public gaming event was uh the soccer con tournaments and you know soccer con huge venue uh definitely one of the bigger conventions in the seattle convention center and you know to me just super overwhelming because there are top national players for all the games that i played and hundreds and hundreds of panels and millions and millions of people and um to be honest, it kind of scared me off. I was like, <laughs> oh, geez, if everything's like this, I don't know if I could take it. I'm not high enough level yet. You know, I can't process everything mentally. Um, well, there's only one way to get high enough level. Yeah, you got to attend more events. Um, so w- with that, you know, it's kind of a bummer because, like, PAX only comes around once a year. Mm-hmm. And if you miss it, oh, man, you're out enough for another 12 months. But you can't really think of it like that because there's so many events to go to. We've got GamCon coming up. Um, there's And there's all these, like, Small events that are cropping up because people are using social media like Facebook event organizing, uh, Facebook's event system, or Kickstarter, like you said, to start getting these this framework into play where there's always something to do. Like I think I could I could literally get on Facebook right now and I have, think I have an event invitation for every day of the week for the next six months for the something to go to. So if I'm ever like oh I'm bored, I can just go to Game Breakers, I can go to Game Clux, I can go to Boise, Idaho. I can go to Vancouver. Uh, there's there's always something to do, and it's it's really great because now you're in always LinkedIn because people are taking the initiative to create events. And right. it's, it's just it's so great. Um, so thank you guys, event organizers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah. Event organizing. Event organizing. Gonna, make sure you're ready for it. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a handful and a mouthful and a mindful. It's uh, <laughs> it's a lot to digest. Um. So we had a couple more things to talk about in regards to um, events overall, like event planning. Um, Now this is of course going to be pretty respective to the type of event you want to organize. If you want to organize a tournament, there's a lot more in regards to contacting players or knowing the game or knowing the game format. You know, if you're running an Xbox 360 tournament, you need Xboxes. And sometimes you need to like contact players and have them contribute, but yeah. It's all kind of a, it's all kind of a mess. If you guys have questions about running events, I mean, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. Hit, feel free to hit Sean up on Twitter. You know, we could probably answer them personally on the side, maybe after we're done streaming. Yep. If you guys, you know, are interested in putting something on, uh, drop a question in stream chat. I'm sure there's more than a few event organizers who'd be willing to drop a line or two of advice. And uh, if you want to see an event at any at any uh, at a convention or at a people that do events, just just ask, hey, are you going to be doing this event? Uh, when's the next time you're going to do it? I think it's pretty funny because just like how an author like won't stop talking about their book, yeah. it's like their livelihood, right? It's what they've put their last six months into. They're super invested in it, and it's all they really want to talk about. So if you walk up to somebody who has a booth at GamCon, and, they're like, and you're like, hey, uh, I like X game that you guys are doing, like, I don't know, Munchkin or something. Yeah. Do you guys do more events like this? And of course they're going to say yes, and they're going to give you all the information about how they went about getting it set up and all the great stuff and how they came to participate in events like GamCon. And if they haven't heard of it before, then you told them something that's you like that they might be able to yeah, bring then they in can, the Yeah, they can incorporate that and use it to improve. Um, so real quick, it looks like we've got a list. Yes. You should provide for me the contents of the list. Ooh, uh, ooh, we got it on the main screen. No, that's, that's good. I like that. Oh, okay. If you want it, I'll something. give it. No, yeah. yeah sure. Why yeah, not? Right. Sure. So uh, this is basically our... Uh, this is our quick framework. 
This is what Blake gave me before uh, this whole thing. It's our uh, script. Yes. <laughs> I did that out uh, in about like five minutes because I was so busy today. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's good. It's good. I mean, with the OK convention needing, um, you can have some things off. You can have some things on. But like you said, this is like within five minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the core framework. This is your basics. This yeah, is this all is, your right. basic ingredients. This is what we see a lot of conventions have. We see a lot of conventions having panels, uh, vendor floors, artist alleys, contests. A lot of contests can either be in like gaming contests or if it's an anime convention like uh, AMV competitions yeah. or cosplay competitions. Cosplay competitions, catwalks, stuff like that. Like, hey, Do look at this. Dojinchi or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, usually yes. I know that there's a convention that I do want to make a shout out to because they were the first uh, convention that was really willing to cross promote with us because we haven't, uh, we're not doing the, uh, what should I call it? Like the thing where you aren't, uh, Nonprofit. That's Nonprofit. Yes. There you go. We're doing we that. We have yet to incorporate yet. Yes, and we are going to do that after our first year because six months versus twelve months we don't of have planning. Time, it out. Do you yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so uh, their big thing is guests like uh, Japanese idols, mm -hmm. which uh, they're going to be two weeks before ours in Silverdale, which is the city right next right next to ours. Ooh. So, if you like Japanese idols. That that's where you find them. Yes. Seriously, they are the only Japanese idol convention in the country, and they have a lot of them. So. Oh man. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> um. So, uh, real quick, I had a question about the list. So, tons of effort gets invested in contacting people to show up. Um. You know, vendors to provide signage, or you know, you have to pay them. Um large amounts of money yeah. <laughs> to make t-shirts and posters and all that great stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you you got to spend money hosting a website. Sometimes you need to pay a guy to make the website. Yeah. And then you need to pay a webmaster to maintain the website. <laughs> um, there, there's definitely a lot that goes into uh, the financial portion of it. And um, I, so I wanted to make a shout out to the community. Um, this is why door fees are really important. Um, they go towards keeping the events alive. So if, like a lot of people say, ah, I'm not going to PAX, I don't have X amount of money to spend this year. And I'm like, all right, that's understandable. It's not in your budget. But if you do and you like the event, go to the event, support the event, because if you don't, then maybe that 100, 100 or $45 was what took to shave off the you know appearance of a vendor that you might have really enjoyed seeing or a guest that you know they couldn't really convince to come out and it's it's just the the more people get together and support the small events even if they're not you know completely free which is pretty pretty yeah uh, almost impossible <laughs> um, it's just it's so valuable to not only us as the event organizers because but because we're doing this so that you guys have something we're doing it really just doing it for you guys. Um, everybody who shows up, they're they're the audience. They're the target of our our ambition and our yeah. work. Yeah, it's really there are so many costs. As you said, we were able to keep a lot of the costs in house. Mm -hmm. Like we didn't pay anyone to do the website. It was mm -hmm. all done by us. We did a lot of the signage and everything, uh, but just the basics like the venues paying guests oh yeah it's so much for signage like we just sent out all of our swag for our kickstarter mm -hmm. backers it was about 900 bucks alone and <laughs> that's already like 10 percent of your your budget exactly um, <laughs> so, so but... i know sorry sorry just give me one sec uh a lot of people who attend events are like oh man the event organizers are just pocketing all of this and i'm like no, <laughs> no, A, 90% of the time they're operating a deficit, yeah. you know, B, any extra money they have immediately goes to funding the next event. Yeah. Like almost every time it's, they might buy themselves, chance. they might buy themselves like lunch or something at <laughs> like Taco Del Mar, yeah. <laughs> but they're, they're not going to the Cheesecake Factory and getting like 20 sides. That is yes. not the case. No. Um, um, we, we need... It's so hard to generate a profit because in your first year, 
will probably not profit, but you still have to run the event mm -hmm. such that it is profitable. Yep. That way you can have something stored for next year, and it is very hard. So we just need to sell as many badges as possible. <laughs> if we just sell out all of our badges, we will have like a $20,000 profit that we can just run next year, and that way we can procure mm -hmm. even better guests and people that are just more popular, and we can get a lot more voice actors and stuff like that. And that way, um, you guys can also be independent of the community for funding. So it's not going to require quite so much effort of everybody really chipping in so hard. And it can kind of reward the people who have already put in so much work without having to you know, ask for that again next year. Exactly. Um, so I think, but in order to pay you know, the venue or the entry fee, uh, it's really important that the attendees know what to expect. And to need that, you need a schedule. Yes, you definitely need a schedule. Even if up until like two weeks, you only have like who's going to be there mm -hmm. or what's going to be going on, but nothing like if you have a uh, like time schedule within like the two weeks, that's where I see a lot of small conventions doing. And it works because a lot of people go online to check out that time schedule mm -hmm. like the night before. Oh, because they're going to say, oh, well, what if I just I'm only available Saturday. Yeah. So what do I what can I see on Saturday? Or yeah. what can I be prepared to see on Saturday? Where should I be? What panels are going to be running during my availability? Um, right. That that kind of stuff is really important. Um, and then at the same time, uh, you're not you as the event organizer even aren't going to know because you might have last minute <laughs> cut ins, last minute people who are dipping out. Well, that happens like all the time. Right. I'm, I'm sure that, that happens for everyone. <laughs> every convention or event or anything. Right. Has like that one person where it's like yes we got that one guy and then nope or it's like oh miyazaki is coming that's cool and then at the very you know he, he's like oh sorry guys i missed my flight oh. and you're like oh. <laughs> <laughs> the, the five thousand people who signed up to get miyazaki's signature all of a sudden like you were 50 percent of our revenue right there yeah <laughs> um so i had a question about so you guys obviously, you know, you know, you let let's say that you know that there's going to be a uh, like a board game tournament or an AMV tournament or competition or anything along those lines. You can put that on the event page. You can put it on like the event portfolio. Mm -hmm. But you don't necessarily have to have a dedicated time slot for it until the event starts coming up. Right. You got to kind of to shuffle things around and see what fits in what time slots so you can make everything fit. You don't want to uh end up with excess or sorry excess is okay well <laughs> yeah excess is fine if you don't well, want to end up with dead periods of just like nothing happening right well excess could be a problem if you don't have enough venue for or enough it. staff yeah, yeah that's a problem um did or you guys you have just throw swag at them you, for that entire excess amount you could, of time. you'd be like hey guys we don't have any <laughs> events scheduled besides our free t-shirt giveaway Here's our ah! free video cards. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Um, so, uh, were there any difficulties that you guys ran into, like planning the schedule for the event? Oh, yeah. I let's, mean, I, sorry, that's I kind of, that's kind of a rhetorical question. Get it going. Um, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually more interested in steps that you guys took to solve those. So, yeah. So here's what we did. Um, we kind of divvied up because you have to divide your events up into several different classifications. Mm -hmm. I kind of looked at Sakurakon's uh, model of their organization. So they divided up cosplay contests, they divided up gaming events, they mm -hmm. divided up panelists, and divided up bands. So music, gaming. So that's kind of how it works. So I have one person working on music appointments. So sh what she does is she has a list of musicians that want to be at GamCon. Mm -hmm. She creates a, a preset schedule that is available in increments of 30 minutes to allow a 15 minute setup time and 15 minutes of Blake. and you're, cut, uh, you're cutting out buddy oh i'm sorry about that that's I okay i have my threshold set too high it's all right but uh once she has those increments of the schedule set she can just get people uh who want a certain time of day into that preset schedule mm -hmm. so that way it's a lot it's very modular mm. and she doesn't have to do a lot of futzing around so in the in the and event so, that like somebody has to dip out you're like oh this guy's got the same period like at the same time frame of let that slot and you can just like drop him right in 
Exactly. And mm -hmm. you also have people who are willing to do, because a lot of people, um, they only sign up for like 30, 45 minutes of music. Mm -hmm. And they'll usually be just fine with going longer. And if there's no one for that slot, we do have a backup, just person with an iPod that will be playing at the stage, mm -hmm. just background music. So that way, like the atmosphere doesn't die down or anything. Right. And it keeps people in the room. Exactly. Right. The, the panel planning uh, was a little bit harder just because the range of durations is so much higher. You know, you mm -hmm. you might have a person with just a 45 minute lecture just because they want to touch on something. Then you have someone who's like, I have this clinic that I want to put on because I want to show people how to purchase and how to create like a home studio for cheap. So those there will be like a one hour to one thirty panel. Mm -hmm. Or there might be like oh, a tech demo where people want exactly. are gonna you're gonna want to keep the panel open for an extra hour so people who attend the panel can like try out something. Exactly, right. and so we that you can't be as modular. So you have to kind of go with the flow with that. So you have to be like, okay, uh, what time of day do you want? And then I'll be like, can you do like two fifteen, even though that's a really weird time. Right, right. And, and they'll usually be okay with it, but we, we want to be able to to have. Uh, 15 minutes total uh, between setup and teardown so it's a lot more strict than the bands because they have equipment mm -hmm. like more heavy equipment but this one we because of this more strict schedule uh we got to have a lot of moderators we got to have a lot of ushers getting people in and out and a lot of staff to take care of equipment and stuff so panelists can kind of get in and get out and kind we have to have a uh, like a hallway for a line set aside so if panelists want to do signatures and stuff like oh, that oh right right sit outside and that way people can sign their books we i am hoping that Lee Hadon, our local author is a huge hit because she is wonderful and she is one of those writers that i think will kind of make it big in this area and then hopefully she gets a lot of you know autographs uh -huh. and stuff like that but yeah the panels it's a lot of fun we have we have our first day entirely filled out. We still have a couple of slots left over on Sunday. So if you guys have something you want to submit, we're not, um, you know, this is a small convention. We're not trying to say like, hey, only if you're like giant bomb or you if don't you have are... to bid on floor space. Ahem. Ahem. <laughs> that too. Um, well, actually, our indoor floor space is completely out. You would have to oh, get sorry, an outdoor uh... booth. But if you want to be a panelist, if you bring us content, we will bring you free badges, access to the guest room, access to catering, Ooh. like all of those privileges. Ooh. So, and you help because you help sell tickets by, by being content there. Content to us, right. yeah. So we value you guys, and like if you come in and do something for us, we'll just we're gonna kind of pull out all the stops for you as we are doing with our musicians. That's awesome. Hey Blake, yeah. I have a question for uh, to ask you live. So we have uh, a few people that have already uh, signed up to do some game demos. Is that going to be uh, booths or panels? Those are just going to be tables. So we'll have a game. Oh, so they're just going to be like the devs are gonna just going to be there and be like, hey, here's our game. Have fun. For yeah. the board game demos, there's just going to be a big room with uh, just tabletops. Cool. We'll just be there playing their board games, and that way it's kind of an open walk-in, walk-out. So that way, if you're if you have like a long campaign that you want to demo, you can always have someone come in and replace them. And we have some privateer pressers that are going to be there demoing some new games from Privateer Press. We have some, you know, just some custom indie board games that are there. Uh, but for actual video game demos, uh, for like people who are advertising their video games, they will require a booth. So. If you want to be at GamCon and you're struggling or anything and you're just like, oh man, you know, booths are expensive. It is 150 bucks. It is like 100 times cheaper than being at like E3 or something. So contact me and I can try to get you set up with a discount because we want to, because again, even though you are advertising your game, you are also providing something for us and we do want to re reward you for that. I will, I will try to accommodate for you whether you're whether you're selling cookies or whether you're demoing a game. So just hit me up. <laughs> All right. Uh, can um, I uh, interject with one more announcement? Uh, yes. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, everyone that's watching right now, mm -hmm. because you have the scoop, everyone in this chat and all the viewers will be getting Listen up, stream discounts. chat. Yeah. All of you will be getting 30% discounts on all of our badges. If you go to register in about 30 minutes, I'm going to be implementing coupon code ND3. So just the name of this event, Indie 3, enter that in, 30% off of your price. So I'm going to wow. recap that real quick, guys, in case 
you for some reason weren't listening, uh, the GamCon event organizers are offering a 30% discount, 30% off the door price. If you guys go to their website and use the coupon code ND3. D3, that coupon code will be active in about 15 minutes. So, keep the tab open. Uh, (laughs) um, Okay, yeah. Uh, So we'll have that live in just a couple minutes for you guys. Now, you guys were talking earlier. I'll probably I'll probably tweet that out. We'll probably all tweet that out. Actually, James, yeah. can you tweet that out? Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> got me when I should have <laughs> been you, drinking some you. water. Uh, sure. All right. Uh, what, what am I tweeting out? You're, Sorry. Tweet, you're tweeting out that we got a 30% discount on GamCon oh, man. passes. That's awesome. With the coupon code ND3. So if you guys are in stream chat, let I, everybody know. Because if you're in the Bremerton slash Seattle slash Washington slash United States... And you want to go to GamCon. Or this is the just, time. Or if you just want to fly over. Or if you want to fly over from Japan. And why not? 30% off. So uh, thank you so much, Blake, for uh, right, I will get that out. I've, for I've that got... news drop. That's great. Yeah. That may be the uh, the the pebble that starts the avalanche that, yeah, that, needed, that was needed. I actually wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> you threw your other event organizer for a twist. <laughs> well, um, you guys gave us 660 viewers, so we appreciate it. <laughs> awesome. So, you guys were talking about something earlier, and I actually wanted to come back to it. And that's what we were talking... You, Blake was going through uh, a lot of talking about staff. Um, so, I imagine getting... So, that's usually my role. I'm usually staff. You know, I staff at, like, Northwest Majors, uh, Soccer Con, all, all the miscellaneous, like, gaming events for my respective games or uh, gaming in general. And I'm usually, like, just under the event organizer. Like, like Shandor for Existence might be the event organizer, and I would be, like, the guy, kind of like the... Second in command? The, the producer, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't make the event happen. I don't make the, like, event, but I make it happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I was curious how much staff you guys are planning to run at GamCon, because... What? Oh, we just okay, lost connection. Yeah. Uh, oh, we will be. We just lost connection. Hitbox. We'll be back in just a moment. Uh, oh, okay. I am gonna. Hmm. So we're not um, live. We're not. Uh, live. Here, I'm gonna stop. Just a sec. I'm gonna stop it for sure. And we're back. Yay! Okay. Thank you, awesome. Hey. All right. So sorry about that, guys. We had a slight hiccup with our connection to Hitbox, but all solved now. Um. So let's see. Where where was I? My staff. Staff. Yes. So, obviously, it takes a ton of manpower to put on a huge event like GamCon. And I know personally, I am a part of like a fighting game event every like it's kind of like a bi monthly, and we usually have around thirty to like fifty people overall that are there. And just for that, just for like like a budget of forty people, we've got like five or six staff members at the very yeah, least. Seriously, who are required to take this? So it's like roughly ten percent of the attendance are staff. So. Um, what was kind of like your guys' personnel budget, I guess I would say, for the, the GamCon event? And how did you acquire these people to help out? Yeah, if you mean budget just in terms of quantity of available mm-hmm. people, uh, it's actually, we're, we're sitting pretty good. Okay. Uh, we had, when, during our Kickstarter campaign, we just had so many people who just wanted to be a part of this uh, kind of grassroots thing. And so we have, right now, I have 20 old. We have about 30 more on deck oh so awesome the most labor it's going to be dedicated to staging mm-hmm. so like rooms. so like setting up everything and yeah hospitality like, so so you guys have got like uh like like food like catering i guess would be hospitality yeah um, so actually what's amazing threshold like i'm sorry it's okay hampton the hampton inn is going to be contracting out their own caterers and so we just play a pay a flat fee for that oh nice and so we just all we need for hospitality in the you know in the catering and the the con suite Mm -hmm. we just need about three staff members to kind of hang out there and just make sure every everyone's good and if someone has a problem to kind of relay it towards us and but the main thing is yeah it's uh like event set up so we need just people to help with vendors and everything just help with tents or help with just zoning and everything or if they just have general questions that they can send it up to us um another thing regarding hospitality is also what happens 
when band members or panelists get here uh, because they have things to do when they get to GamCon. They have to pick up their badges. They, right. ha- they have to put away their equipment until it's their time slot. And they have to go pick up their equipment. Then they have to come over, set up equipment, perform, mm-hmm. put it away. So we need to have one or two people for each step of that because we want to make this about those people. We want to have when someone, as soon as someone gets on the off the ferry, we want to have someone there to guide them all the way to GamCon, mm-hmm. get them to the wheel call, get them their badges, and then get them all the way to the hospitality room where right. they can store their stuff. So most of our staff is actually going to be devoted to kind of relations and hospitality mm-hmm. and just taking care of the people who are providing content for us. So um, it sounds like you guys did a ton of wor- work outreaching to uh, like the respective sub communities and having you know, people show up and volunteer. Um, I know personally at my events, it's like it's very much a case of the sub communities are super aggressive about wanting to get like elbow deep in the event, like uh, like for fighting games. Um, like I guess I could take myself as an example. Like I'm a fighting game player. I attend events as a competitor. Um, and one of the reasons I became an event organizer is because I saw all these, you know, it, like usually it's like a really micromental thing, like, oh man, I wish they had this at this event, or yeah. I, or I was really, I would really look forward to this event if they had this, or I I would be considering attending this event if they had Y, and I was like, ah, I'll just make it happen. So you know, I'd yeah. show up to an event and I'd be like, all right guys, this is gonna be live. We're gonna stream it. We're gonna bring cameras, <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take video archives, and yeah, yeah I'm gonna ha- I'm gonna have my my good friends show up, and it's it's, it's gonna be good. And um, actually, I had a quick question to Shandor, if you're still there. Yeah, I'm back. So oh okay, all right, good to know you're back. Um. So you work a lot with, specifically, I'm going to throw out some names here you guys probably aren't going to know, but uh, Dennis, Viter, um, respective Street Fighter Marvel communities about, and like, how has their impact as volunteers impacted the way you run events? Huge. I mean, I, I can't really say enough. It's like when, it's like my job basically is to, I guess, give you guys, or when I say you guys, I mean like James and you guys that come out and help help with these events Mm -hmm. um i guess the avenue or the means to be successful so like for me it's kind of like when i when i move locations which is one of the things that we did with game breakers when we moved uh in september to the Mm -hmm. new venue where we're at now it was like i asked for you know feedback like hey when you come here to stream you know what do you need what what would you like to see me do um, and it's like, hey, you know, we want a projector. And I'm like, okay, I can make that happen. And, you know, for James, it's like, I need, like, my own nuclear power plant. And I'm like, I can't do that. <laughs> but it's like... Uh, we get um, close. <laughs> we're close. But it's like, you know, it's like I try to, I try my best to give, um, give everybody what they need. So my whole thing was I want to make sure I have enough Xboxes, um, enough PlayStations, enough gear, mm-hmm. um, enough monitors to where... Basically, the players, all they have to concentrate on is showing up and playing. Um, you know, I, I can't say enough about some some things that happen where, you know, you have to bring gear to an event. Like, I understand you could do that for a LAN party. But when you're an actual, like, dedicated venue like, you know, like we are, it's like my whole thing is if we can get it and it's within our means to make it happen, then we need to make it happen for the betterment of the community and for everybody that, that comes here. And that's one of the things that that I know that I focus on personally. Mm-hmm. And then from there on, just the the community involvement just kind of takes what you provide and flies off with it. It really seems yep. like they kind of and they're constantly giving me. You guys are constantly giving me feedback. I'm giving you guys feedback. I mean, I watch the stream. I follow as much stuff as I can to kind of give input mm-hmm. and kind of push you guys in a good direction. Because I mean, it, it's it's good to have that relationship. I mean, it's like the whole thing is about the players and it's mm-hmm. about making the community grow. You know, everything else that happens after that is kind of secondary. So that actually brings up a really good point. Um, event recap or overall event um, public, publicity. Yeah. Publicity. <laughs> um, so it's, it's great if you host like a – let's say you follow the steps that we – we have vaguely outlined on the broadcast, and you say, hey, um, I want to put on my event, and you do it, and it works, and everybody has a blast. Even if it's like five people and they all have a blast, or if be it 5,000 people and everyone has a wonderful time, 
it's important to let the world know that everybody had a wonderful time. Yep. You know, they're going to be out there talking about it on Facebook, and they're going to be out there talking about it and saying, hey, you know, this was really cool. I'll definitely go again next year. But unless you, unless like an event organizer goes out of the way, or um, maybe the event organizer will hire like a, a camera, like a photography crew, or maybe it, it's important for them to reach out to like blogs, news publications, um, Twitter journalists, I guess you'd call them these days, <laughs> um, about bringing attention to like all of the positive aspects of the event because that's just so important to really supporting like the healthy future of like everything, like like for us at in in E3, um, you know, we want to get as much coverage as we can of all the all the great stuff that we have to offer you guys, and we want to make this event like a blast in the future. Um, so. I just wanted to, just to bring that up because I notice a lot of event organizers. You know, they'll go out for these smaller events and they won't they won't hype it up. You know, <laughs> they won't they won't make the the YouTube video with the highlight reel or the um, you know the the wrap up news post about everything they loved about the event and everything that they're planning to fix for next year. Right. Um, and I I find that stuff really valuable as an attendee. So I really look forward to when event organizers provide stuff like that. What we were, if it's okay if I interject here, Go ahead. what we were going to do at the end, um, because some other anime conventions do this, I believe Anison does this, and Otakon, but what they do is the very last panel of their event is complete Q&A, tears to shreds, oh, what did you guys dislike the, about our convention? The, what, what did they call it at SoccerCon? Um... There's a battery and assault panel or something. <laughs> that might be it, but we are going to be having that as our final event plus a send-off. Mm -hmm. uh, because we want to show everyone, it's not just a front, but we want to show everyone that we care about them and mm -hmm. also use that feedback actually and make our next event better. Um, because not only does it you know, improve next year's event mm -hmm. and everything, but you know, it's, it is kind of a capitalistic sales tactic where look we are trying to make it better and we right yeah make it feedback, bigger make it better so get more people back. in there yeah so it's always a good idea and i think any convention that does that like mm -hmm. feel safer with them and you can tell that they really do they, they really value it yeah. um now kind of to piggyback if i can piggyback on that a little bit as well i mean i i 100 i'm in agreement with that because it you know players need to feel like especially from an organizer standpoint, as far as us having like an actual s storefront, I know it's probably different for you guys planning a, a big convention. I mean, people, I mean, obviously we, we have to take in money to, to make the event happen or whatever, but it, you know, people want to feel like they want to feel valued. Mm -hmm. And I think recapping the event and, and making them feel like it's more than just about taking your money or us trying to like make money off of the event. It's really about, you know, it's really about, doing what we love and sharing what we love and and you know with with the players because it's really all about the players and it, I, I think the recap an event like that is huge and get that feedback and kind of just run with it and then also you know as a like a, a staff for attend events like these i often find that like like an attendee who attends an event, right? They're going to go to a panel, they're going to get their signatures, they're going to get their art book, and they're going to be like, wow, that was awesome, I had a lot of fun. Um, but they're not going to be able to see the inner working. So a lot of times it's just as important for the staff to re-communicate with the event organizers about things like, hey, this went well, this went well, this went well, we didn't have enough guys working on the food truck. You know, <laughs> yeah. we ran out of chips, come on. Um, and... Uh, so a lot of times I feel like if you're at an event and you're helping run it, you know better than anyone like the uh, guts and the inner workings of all of it and you know what goes yeah, wrong serious. and you're going to know you're going to know how to fix it. And so if you're at an event like if you're staffing at SoccerCon or GownCon and something goes wrong and you know how to fix it, contact the event organizer and be like, "Hey, let's do this right next year." Yeah. Yeah, um, absolutely. Cuz that stuff is just completely invaluable. Just in indescribably invaluable. Cause we that's, have, that's, and we already have a lot of that. Like we have, I'm sorry to interrupt, but like we have a game manager from PAX who's here, and he has so much experience. Oh, and so valuable. He's already letting us know beforehand. Like, okay, are you sure that there's enough hours before setup time? And you like, guys yeah, are probably yeah. gonna run into this problem. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and he's like, this is unavoidable. Don't worry about it. And so there's a lot of kind of, you know, 
insight that we can get that will just make this first event much better. But it's so important to value uh, the advice of everyone. But it's also kind of important, especially for a first year, because right now all of the, we haven't incorporated. I all of the liability is on me right now un until we incorporate. And that and that's so, a that's a tough stance to be in because. So uh, yeah. yeah. So, so what my thing is, just for this first year, I don't want to put the liability on someone else because mm -hmm. they they shouldn't be in the spotlight. If they're not officially recognized legally as like a board member or something, shouldn't be the one that's getting grilled out there in that last survey panel. Uh, but at the same time, like Alistair of the Knights watching Game of Thrones said, everyone does have an opinion when you're a leader everyone has opinion about every single thing you make but if you start you know questioning yourself too much mm -hmm. that's when everything falls apart yeah you, and so there's a firm stance people con control the, the way you but you want people to have valuable input and you want to be able to show them that you are listening to them so it's kind of a tough balance, but once once this convention's done, I can sit back, I can start incorporating as a nonprofit, we'll elect everyone, and then that's where the mechanisms mm -hmm. for everyone having proper input and actually being able to force it in will kind of happen. Because that's, that's the part where finally there isn't a system where I'm not going to be here any longer unless some, if someone votes me out, that's it. And that way people have a mechanism for exacting change. Right now it's just kind of an authoritarian thing. Yeah, you're which just kind of pointing but, your uh, finger around. Yeah. You, you need to do it this first year just because there's so much stuff to get mm -hmm. take, taken care of. And you don't want to have people kind of laboring in like crappy groundwork stuff because there's so much uncertainty that you work with as just a person of a first year event. I don't want to subject people to that this first year. I know as you move into, as, as events move into becoming more and more established, you know, the sub-communities kind of take control because you yeah. get staffers who have attended multiple years who become directors of their respective, um, you know, sub-elements. Like, I mean, um, like I, I attended a gaming uh, tournament called NEC over on the East Coast of Philadelphia last year. And that event's been running for, I don't know, like eight years or something? Wow. Like a, a really long time. It's probably been longer, but a really long time. So, and when I got there, it was pretty apparent that the staffers who had been there were just contributors who had just stuck around because the event just had yeah. continued to run. And the event organizer, all he really did was get on Twitter and say, hey, NEC 14, let's make it happen. And then the media guy from last year signed up. You know, the guy who does the anime game signed up. And then they just you run the formula. Once you find something that works, it can you can stick with it and make you know hones and shave of his improvements. But yeah, uh, once you get the system in place, it kind of runs itself. We are yeah. We We've lost our right connection. Now, uh, trying to get that system. Oh, hold on. Uh, it just five seconds ago went down. All right. Yeah, let's try again. Oh yeah. yeah. And well, um, right before we go, all live, right. Looks like oh, we're we are back live. Okay. Looks like we should be back up here. Okay. So, uh, sorry about that, guys. Slight hiccup. Um, so we are running towards the end of our scheduled time slot. But uh, while we take a look at what we have coming up next, I just want to give a quick recap and huge, huge thanks to Sean Burton, um, Blake, and Shandor for tuning in and helping me. You know, kind of dissect the entire background of event organization uh, what and goes how, on yeah. and how to experience. make it with um, not really having a big name right I mean I think the the moral of the story is I mean you guys aren't the developer of XYZ game you know you're not the owner of the Kitsap Convention Center you know you're not some huge big label band you're just some guys who said hey Make a convention. Let, let's let's, let's make a convention. Why not? Yeah. And I mean, a couple phone calls later, a mission statement, and you know, a website and a budget, and then you guys got. It's a, happening. Yeah, it's happening. Yeah. It's Something actually happening. happening. Um, so, shining examples. This is <laughs> definitely possible. Um, so thank you guys so much for contributing all of your uh, knowledge and insight to event organization. I hope this has helped answer some questions on part of the stream, anyone who's attending. Um, once again, you can, if, these guys are great resources, and not to distract them from their upcoming event, but um, I'm sure they would be extremely willing to give out pieces of advice or um, you know tidbits of information if you guys are looking for 
any sort of additional supplementary content. So, you know you can find Sean on Twitter, but uh, where can people contact you, Blake or Shandor? Uh, Shandor, do you want to go first? Go ahead, Blake. <laughs> All right, so um, <laughs> the main GamCon account, that's the one I man most mm -hmm. times. Just at Gam Convention, so G A N Convention. Mm -hmm. And if you just want to get at me directly on Twitter, just at uh, Blizzard Hizig. So, uh, how do I? How do you spell it? B L I Z I H I Z A K E. Just shizzle up the name Blake. Get <laughs> Blizzard Hizig. Okay. Uh, and yeah. then, uh, and then, Shandor, where can people contact you if they're interested in attending your events? Um, well, we're kind of all over the place too. So I'm, but I'm here the majority of the time. So mm -hmm. they can either visit our website, which is just gamebreakers.com. Uh, we have Twitter, which is two five three or at two five three game gamebreakers with the Z at mm -hmm. the end. And uh, if they really feel like I'm not boring and they want to talk to me, <laughs> then um, <laughs> then they could contact me directly on Twitter, which is uh, at Mister Shantastic. And then uh, I mean everybody's so personable in real life too. I mean. Uh, a lot of times they might not be able to respond immediately to a Twitter direct message, but if you're at the event, be like, hey, where's Shandor? Hey, where's Angelo? Hey, where's Sean? And then if we're not, you know, dead or sleeping on the, underneath the hotel room table from exhaustion <laughs> of staying up for 72 hours trying to run an event, we'll probably be very happy to talk to you. Um, so, once again, thank you to our panelists, uh, Sean Burton. Blake, unfortunately, I don't know your last name. I'm sorry. Pudu. Pudu. Okay. And uh, Shandor Collins for tuning in. Um, you guys have been great. Thank you guys for having me. Yep. Thank hey, you. Shandor, what you're doing, man. That's awesome. Keep it up. I really appreciate what you're doing. I really appreciate you guys, too, and good luck on your event. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Thank you, everyone. And that wraps up and concludes our insight to event organization and, you know, overall framework convention. Um, that is the end of our scheduled content for today. Luckily, we've been able to build a little bit more than the entire hour. Yeah, yeah just a little beat, bit. Beat our goal. Yeah. Um, so we've got a couple indie game. Um, Let me jump in here. Okay, uh, yeah. James has I, got the schedule. So. I have the okay. schedule. All right, here we go. Uh, we are going to start up with a short intermission while we get ready for our next panel. At, so it's 7 now, or mm -hmm. seven ten now. So in 20 minutes, we're going to be back online with uh, Angelo here, yes, who's me. who has joined us, is going to run the next Indie Showcase. And we're going to do that for half an hour. And then we're going to switch over to our next panel, Effective Drama in Games, with host Arden and AV. I believe I'm pronouncing those cor uh, correctly. Please forgive me if I'm not. <laughs> So af after that, we will be running a musical showcase mm -hmm. with musical guest Svetlana, who will be taking over the stream and streaming live with her music. And then at that point, we will be closing down for the night, and we will see you all in the morning. So I'm pretty excited to get back to you guys with the 7.30 p.m. Indie Showcase. Um, we've already presented such a huge volume of amazing content. I'm really excited to see what else lies, because I know they're saving a lot of the really good stuff um, for later in the week. Um, either way, we've got to we've got to take an intermission. So you know, get some, get some water, load those trailer videos. Yep. <laughs> cool off a bit. It's like eighty five degrees yeah, in it's here. Okay. It's really hot. This is really it hot. Is. So, uh, all right. Well, with that, I am going to uh, just leave us on the intermission, and we will join you back here in twenty minutes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye, hi, and dream big. <laughs>